What's an exosuit and why is Dairy NZ testing them on farms? Well, it's one of a handful of practical ideas, including a new easy entry calf trailer and a flexible breast rail that Dairy NZ is working on with farmers to reduce injuries on dairy farms. Because although we know health and safety matters to farmers, sprains and strains remain all too common, especially at calving time. It's also timely with the launch of Safer Farms Farm Without Harm campaign, where farmers and organisations are signing a pledge to take responsibility to protect one another from preventable harm. Today you'll hear about the research Dairy NZ is doing in this area from senior scientist Dr Callum Eastwood, who leads the research project, and Waikato dairy farmer Marcus Graham, who's involved with testing some of the prototypes. Welcome to episode 61 of Talking Dairy. My name's Ben Chapman-Smith, and I hope you enjoy this conversation. Marcus and Callum, thanks so much for joining me here today on the podcast. How are you both? Yeah, good, thank you. Yeah, good. Cheers. Good stuff, guys. Hey, Marcus, let's get going with you. Tell us a bit about yourself, mate. Whereabouts are you farming? What's your background? And tell us a bit about your farm. Yeah, sure. Um, so I've been farming for about eight years, family farm in Ohalpo. Flat property, a little bit of rolling country, 200 hectares and about 145 effective and milking about 470 crossbred cows. And we were just having a quick chat about the fact that you've got quite an interesting background, eh? Yeah, so um, dairy farming, prior to that I was um, flying planes and selling real estate, quite a bit different than uh, milking cows, yeah. (laughs) Good one. Hey, Callum, let's start with a bit of background. Why are we talking about sprain and strain injuries? And why is Dairy NZ doing research into the topic? I think it's a topic that kind of flies under the radar quite a bit on farms. It's something that would, I think, happen to most people on farms during their career, that they would pick up some kind of sprain strain injury like a sore back, a twisted ankle, or something much worse. But we often focus on the bigger injuries on farm. So a few years ago, we did some work looking at milking injuries. And through that, we found that something like 40% of claims to ACC were actually sprain-strain injuries. And these things often come through the sort of spring calving period when the workload gets higher, uh, there's a lot of fatigue, sort of longer days can be wet and, um, you know, there's a lot of lifting um, of calves and calf rearing at that time of year. So that's a a real sort of risk period on farms. So, yeah, it was something that um, we'd identified and built a project around to look at. And the impact of those injuries is quite significant. I mean, apart from obviously sore bodies, you know, but actually you guys have done some research into the time on average that people have to take off work because of those injuries, right? Yeah, that's right. We we did a bit of a survey at the start of this project that we're going to talk about and found that people that had an injury that led to a, a sort of a week off work could on average be taking something like 27 days to get back to work, to be recovered enough. And so that has a lot of impact on the person that's been injured. But if you think about our farms and our teams, often it's sort of not not that easy to bring someone in to replace that person. So the rest of the team can often have to pick up the slack, I guess, and do the work when you've got someone out injured for a while. The other thing on our farms is often there isn't another person you can easily bring in. So if you've got a bit of a sprain or strain, we, we often work through it. Obviously, that has implications for the recovery of that injury, but also, I guess, how well you can do your job. Yeah. So how did this project come about and who is involved? Yeah. So like I said, we had been doing some work around injuries related to milking. And through that, we saw an opportunity to apply for some funding through ACC. So we did a few years ago and and we're lucky enough to secure that funding. It was um, funding for a three-year project and we're in the third year of that project now. The project was really focused on trying to understand the problem about where sprain and strain injuries were coming from, understand the key risk areas, but then actually design solutions to address those problems. So we've partnered with QCONS as a delivery partner. We've got a lot of expertise there that helps in this particular area. And uh, farmers, particularly uh, Pamu farms, have been working with them. They have a lot of experience in understanding where the risk areas are for sprain, strain injuries, but also we've been working with them to test some of our ideas out on farm. Cool. Marcus, what's your experience with sprains and strains? And 
In your opinion, you know, what do you see as the major risk points um, that farmers need to manage? Yeah, I have had an experience actually, and uh, I guess Callum sort of touched on one of them, which was a sprained ankle. So um, I was coming in from the backyard into the cow shed down the down the stairs and uh, sprained my ankle on a wash hose. So um, yeah, it wasn't that ideal. So yeah, I guess uh, been in the old moon boot for six weeks or so wasn't that ideal. I did find a moon boot that could go through into a gum boot, which was quite handy. Well done. Definitely familiar with the old sprain. What do you think are the main risk points for farmers? In and around calving time, you are tired, you are a little bit fatigued. Simple things like that wash down hose, make sure that it is put away straight away, not just at the end of the milking, say. So just little little things like that and lifting stuff, heavy things, using your knees and not your back necessarily. So just, just all those little things that we're always told just to make sure you do the basics right, I suppose. Yeah, sure. So Callum, you touched on um, the fact that you've been coming up with some ideas to reduce sprains and strains. What are some of those ideas and what's the plan for getting those into the hands of farmers? It's been a really cool project to be involved in so far because we are really focused on these solutions and really focused on trying to come up with win-win solutions as we've been calling it. So potentially low cost ideas, but also that when you implement them on farm, hopefully they make the job easier. It's not just about health and safety. It's about um, some kind of solution that makes the job easier and maybe even just a more attractive place to work. So yeah, some of the ideas, we put a lot of work in doing a co-design kind of approach, working with farmers, farm staff, ergonomics people, engineers, and sort of other farm systems experts. And we have about sort of five or six ideas that we're following through. One of the main ones is a easy entry trailer gate, we call it. And essentially, it's a retrofitable gate that goes on the back of a trailer during carving with a saloon door style entry gate at the back. So uh, you can pick up a calf, put it in through the gate, and the gate will, spring loaded, will open as you push the calf in, and as you release the calf, it'll close behind you. So the benefit of that is that you're not having to pick up a calf and try and slide a gate, which might be sort of quite tight, slide a gate across to put the calf in, especially if you're operating by yourself out in the paddock. So yeah, that's one of the key ideas. Uh, That's currently out on farms. We've got about six farms where the current prototype of that is being tried out, and we've been working with Kia trailers to develop and get that product in the hands of farmers. Another idea is based on the same kind of concept, actually. It it came out of the trailer gate concept, is a saloon door-style calf pen gate. So we found quite a lot of farmers, um, you know, sort of set their calf rearing facility up, before calving starts, and if it's a series of kind of gates that are set up inside a shed, people are trying to lift calves over those gates sometimes, or lift buckets, or even just climb over gates, and and we've heard of some injuries, just people climbing over the gates to get between pens. So the idea of this solution is that, again, it's a saloon door, you can just walk through it while holding a calf or holding buckets or something like that. And again, got that out on a couple of farms uh, being tested this spring. And the feedback's been pretty good so far. And we're working with Gallagher to try and assess that and work out whether it's something that we'd work with Gallagher to take to market. You talked about that co-design process. Am I right that like some of those ideas actually, those maybe those early prototypes or those ideas came from farmers? Yeah, that's right. We have one called a flexible breast rail idea. The concept is heifers or smaller cows, when they're entering the particularly a a rotary platform, tend to stand forward away from the milker, and milkers are having to reach a little bit more to put the cups on. That just adds a bit more load on the body and a bit more risk around sprains and strains to your back or your shoulders, but also tends to put the milker in a bit of a more exposed position because they've moved forward. So we saw an idea that a farmer had been using, which was to have essentially a flexible bungee across the bale that sort of pushed the uh, smaller cows back. So larger cows can push forward onto this flexible bungee, but the smaller cows will naturally sort of stand back. So we've taken that idea and tried to enhance it a bit, and we're currently in the next couple of months testing that out on some of our dairy and zed farms. You know, we have to sort of, with all of these solutions, work through what potential implications there might be. 
could be a benefit, but it could have some other implications in that case with, you know, feeding while the cow's in the bale, what implications does it have for a cow trying to get to the feed? Mm. Yeah. So, Marcus, you've been trialling the uh, calf rearing gate and the trailer gate, right? Yes. How have you guys found them? How, how's it gone for you, the team, yeah, this, awesome. you and the team, this, this carbon? Yeah, very, very good. Cohen touched on all those points that we're trying to make it easier for farmers, and I, I think you've achieved that. Yeah, it's been really, really good, particularly – you know, on those big days where you've got a lot of calves coming in, it's so nice in the heat of the battle just to be able to place them in through the back, through the saloon doors, as opposed to, like you say, either by yourself trying to slide the gate that doesn't slide that well, or having to get someone off collecting the calves to come and give you a hand to open the gate. Simple things like the in pen, just to try and have your, your set up just so it's so nice to be able to put the girls that are, the calves that are drinking back into that next pen without having to think, got to lift them over or go around. So yeah, absolutely achieving its goal. Mm. Can I ask, like, how did you get involved in the project? Um, I think I came along to a uh, Dairy NZ Forum Day and uh, had a chat to Cullum and Chris and yeah, I said, geez, I've got a Kia trailer, that looks pretty cool and uh, sort of went from there. Sweet. Mm. And you, you showcased some of these at field days, eh, Callum? Yeah, so we, uh, for people that came along to the farmers forums, we had some of them at the two farmers forums that um, were held this year. That's where we met Marcus, but they were also at field days. So they, six of the ideas got selected for the Innovation Awards tent at field days. So some people may have seen them there. What was the feedback you had from farmers at field days, you know, who were checking those prototypes out? Yeah, I'm mean, generally good, I think, and, um, you know, even giving us some more feedback about how to potentially improve them. Yeah, we were really happy with the sort of engagement we got and the positive feedback. Right, so let's talk about these exosuits. What is an exosuit and and why are you guys looking into them? Yeah, they're they're really interesting things, the exosuits. Um, I guess if you search exosuit on the internet, you probably find something that looks a little bit like Iron Man and and those things do (laughs) exist where you actually get inside you know, a mechanical suit. We're looking at the other end of the exosuits, which are sort of quite flexible sort of harness type systems. There's quite a range of them out there for different jobs, quite often used for sort of repetitive jobs like in warehouses where people are lifting things above their head or pack houses where people are needing their arms supported. So yeah, we just uh, thought, looked like they may have potential for some of the risk areas, which are about lifting heavy objects or, you know, that repetitive motion of cupping cows. So we've got um, three different types of exosuits that we've been trying out. Currently, we have a trial going with some calf rearers looking at um, two of those exosuits. Essentially, whether they improve the experience of when you're trying to feed a calf or move a calf around or lift buckets. And so we're actually um, monitoring people's heart rate, fatigue, sleep and sleep recovery when they're wearing an exosuit and when they're not wearing an exosuit while they do those jobs. What's the end game here? Like, so say we find out these exosuits work really well, what happens then? I guess when it, when it comes to things like the exosuits, it's not something that, that we're developing. So in that case, we're just trying to provide more information to farmers and and some kind of confidence that this might be something worth investing in. I mean, the exosuits, they're, they're still not cheap. They're a few thousand dollars each, so they're not something you'd necessarily just go and buy just to try. So we want to say, is it something worth potentially worth investing in? And also work through any potential issues. Uh, like we were just talking about, um, would you put your wet weather gear on over the exosuit? Would you have to go up a size in your wet weather gear if you did that? Would it wear you wet weather gear out, would the exosuit rub and cause irritation? So we're we're trying to check all those things, I guess, by testing them out on farm but and and then just provide information to farmers about whether this might be a, a worthwhile thing to invest in. Yeah, cool. So Callum, how can farmers keep an eye on the progress of the project and the prototypes? Yep. So we'll be putting out information throughout the rest of this year as we sort of work through testing these prototypes and hopefully take them through to being in the hands of farmers. So watch out for our DRNZ social media. We sort of release things occasionally there. Sign up for your fortnightly DRNZ uh, regional emails. We'd release information there. Or if you Google sprains and strains DRNZ, 
that will take you to our webpage where we have a bit more information about some of these concepts and we'll update that when we have more information about them. We have photos, do we have videos of the prototypes? We have photos and videos on there if yeah, people can get their heads around what we're sort yeah. of talking about a bit more. Yeah, yeah. just thinking for, yeah, for some listeners it might be might be good to go and have a look at what, what those things yeah, look like sure. and we'll put a link to that in the show notes. Yep. Hey guys, thanks so much for joining me today on the chat and uh, yeah, have a great day. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thanks Ben. Thanks for tuning into today's episode. If you're keen to know more about the Reducing Sprains and Strains project, hit the link in the show notes. And if you have any feedback on this podcast or would like to suggest some topics for us to cover in future episodes, please drop me an email at talkingdairy at dairynz.co.nz, which I'll also put a link to in the show notes. Catch you next time.